Good afternoon, everyone. Welcome to today's session with me, Holly, and last and very least, Mr. Randy. <laughs> <laughs> Sponsored by nice. 38 Digital Market. The link is below, guys, if you want to check out the services that Randy does. Yeah. It does say press releases, but there is a bunch of other stuff there as well. Yeah, we have fun. Yeah. But what were you going to say, Randy? Oh, well, hey, first of all, uh, you're kicking it off from Dubai. Is that right? I sure am. I sure am. Man, that is awesome. Yeah. <laughs> uh hey so i well we'll get into that uh a little bit and hear what's going on so i you know have you ever um dealt with or look um i i'm curious on how you guys do this stuff so i know you guys do videos i thought this was appropriate as we're going to talk a little bit about right how to establish your personal brand right for as an seo and and this kind of hit home i thought oh this will be good so one of the things i know that i have been trying to do is put out more video content and i've i've put a, a few videos out and i've been a little frustrated with my how i'm i might be reading information you know maybe from a teleprompter or doing something while i'm talking and presenting but like my eyes are you know i could be looking here but my eyes are like somewhere else because i'm reading right crazy shit. so i'm like how do i solve this and some stuff had come through my uh facebook or whatever on like um cameras that like can hang down in the middle of the screen i don't know if you've seen any of those before i don't maybe this doesn't bother either of you i don't know it bothered the hell out of me so i'm like i gotta fix that i like the eye contact does that bother you at all, Craig? What the hell do you do? <laughs> I, it's all, I just make it up as I go along. Um, <laughs> working with a teleprompter. Um, so when I first started doing camera uh, or, or YouTube stuff, people kept saying my eyes were going all over the place. And someone said to me, it makes me look really untrustworthy, even more untrustworthy than I already look. Um, right. And... It's, they, they also said it made me look nervous. Um, now, I was looking at notes and looking at this and looking at that and Googling shit and all that stuff. Um, I tried the teleprompter, uh, and I fucking hated it. Um, mm. So if we're going to talk about things, if I'm talking about something on YouTube or whatever, I right. could quite comfortably look straight into the camera and talk about your press releases or Holly's, you know, right own thing I, I don't need to be prompted like i study like seo like i follow people i ask questions you know holly what the fuck were you doing with those 100 phones what were you trying to do you know i've taken time to speak to holly in person watch her presentations whatever <coughs> so i think you know with that comes confidence and do you really need to be prompted brandy is if you're on youtube as an expert i think you've got a problem if you need prompted <laughs> <laughs> <You're on there>. <laughs> <laughs> Jeez. All right. Well, I would, my last video I just posted was like 12 minutes long of like pure. So I was like, well, I don't know all of this shit. So, all right. Well, I, I, obviously your balls are much bigger than mine and you can, <laughs> you can do all kinds of stuff. I thought I was coming up with a solution. So, I just landed on this thing. I'm going to show this. PlexiCam. <laughs> nice plastic toy I got. <laughs> it sounds like a hemorrhoid treatment. Just I know. Well, let me tell you something. So let me show you this thing. So th this is like a piece of plexiglass that hangs over your monitor has a little shelf right and so my mo my camera clips to that and then i can kind of move this thing around to be wherever i want to be so like right now i've got this thing this is the first time i've used it right now i have this thing sitting so i can put it right in between the two of you on my monitor and then when i'm looking at you guys talking it probably looks a little better like i'm looking right at you 
But your yeah. eyes move from side to side so you can tell when someone's using a prompter. Because your oh, eyes well, just move a little bit. If you're, I mean, I'm not I, using a prompter now. God. <laughs> no, no, no. But when you're when you're using one and you're looking at straight at it like that, I think you check your video and see if your eyes move. That's what. Oh, I'm it does. No, you're absolutely right. Yes. Yeah. I, can I say something, Holly? I don't know if I'm wrong here. I may have just been telling people this about you. And it might not actually be true, but I'm pretty sure the first time I seen Holly, she was laying back in a bed chugging a beer on someone's podcast. Yeah. <laughs> what no proper? Yes. Dude, I fucking promise you it was a uh, what's that guy called? Oh shit. <sighs> oh man, I can't even remember his name. Like half the world hated him. Um uh, the old black hat guy. Oh shit. I mean, there's a lot of them. I don't want to be given anyone names who dislike but, me at this point. Anyway, I watched it and Holly was laying back in the bed chugging I was. The There was no prompt on nothing, Randy. Nothing. Yeah. And I went, I need to know more about this fucking Holly. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah. hey, I can't even admit, I don't think I've ever seen Holly drink a beer, so that in itself was like, wow, really? Uh, I wow. think it was like one of those uh, it was like um it probably was a Stella, actually, because I did drink beer um, to try to fit in with some of the SEO group in the beginning, but uh, I hate beer, so it was a Stella. I'm sure. yeah. <laughs> I didn't grab it now, but yeah. No, I'm glad to confirm that that's true, because sometimes you're like, did that fucking make that story up? I mean, there yeah. are stories you have definitely probably made up, but that was <laughs> Like homeless dudes in my house and shit oh, like that. Yeah. <laughs> so funny. Uh, all right. So today's subject, hey, topic today. Uh, and so I was trying to kick it off about building and leveraging your personal brand. And whether you're an SEO expert or a, or a video expert or whatever it is, right? So whatever you're trying to build and leverage for your personal brand. So that's what we're going to talk about bit about today and um you know i think we've all have taken you know some different journeys different paths along this journey uh craig now i'm not I, uh i probably ran into you first as you were you know as your as the brand craig um I don't, I'm not going to say that maybe you have been working at that longer than Holly, but you were just the first that I kind of like, hey, who's this guy? And started stumbling into that. And then I came across Holly. Uh, Holly, I don't know if you remember, we met at an SEO, the digital online SEO rock stars. And I plopped down at a virtual table with you and just started chatting you up. <laughs> Did I get up and walk away? No, you actually hung out and talked with me for uh 20 minutes or so which is surprising because i know you kind of like who the hell is this yeah i usually <laughs> who the hell is and i just like get a block, right? i know yeah yeah but so craig uh, le uh, thinking about when you started uh in your journey as kind of building your personal brand uh, how did you start um i i was very fortunate we are when I started, that I had a very close re uh, relationship with Sam Rush. Uh, so I was able to host Sam Rush webinars and podcasts and various other bits and bo bobs. And from there, it all happened really quickly. So Sam Rush gave me the kind of initial platform because they liked uh, the way I presented myself. You know, I was doing a bit of the old black hat talks and all that, and they, they, they quite liked it. Uh, they then started place and meet conferences so they had mm. a main speaker and they would all, and if that guy was in like let's say mexico or america or whatever and there was another event in the uk they'd be like craig can you speak here so i was fortunate enough to to be able to pick up a few speaking slots through same rush and and from there the rest is is history because mm. you know i think once you go on stage and you you get your opportunity to to shine and, and you have some form of knowledge, then I think, you know, it, it kind of just weirdly blows up from there. And I'm pretty sure Holly will be the same, you know, jerking about, doing your thing in the background. 
<coughs> and then someone takes notice and then before you know it, you speak at a conference, before you know it, you know, you're at five conferences or, or whatever. And I think I met Holly probably, it was in 2018, um, at Chiang Mai was the first, uh, I kind of was aware of her uh, from, from looking online. Uh, but, you know, I met Holly in, in Chiang Mai and again, very early into my career, I was given the opportunity to speak at that Chiang Mai in um, 2018. And again, you do that and, and you do reasonably well. And, and again, right. people are like, oh shit, like, let's get more of this guy or whatever. So right, right. And, and I got into that <laughs> through James Dooley. <laughs> I was like, Dooley, I want to speak at Chiang Mai because I'd watched it the year before. That was the year, Holly, where you get your YouTube accounts whipped down and all that kind of stuff when you were flying home. And you're like, fuck, I want to be out there with these guys. And I'm like, I want to speak. And, and James Dooley had a word um, with Matt Diggity and somehow convinced him to give me that opportunity. So, again, sometimes it's a bit of luck, a bit of, you know, people doing a little favour for you or whatever. Um, mm. So that that's pretty much how I got there. And, and, and then from there, I've done quite a lot of speaking events since. So. Right, right. Yeah. I don't I, I, okay, how about you, Holly? What's your Um so I started SEO in 2014 and it was not really SEO, it was YouTube and um I think I went probably 4 4 years before I started really um t going to very many conferences or anything like that. Um my first speaking was at Vid Summit with Daryl Eaves, uh, he's this, he's a YouTube rock star guy. Um, and I was on a, uh, a panelist and actually that's where I lost all my YouTube accounts, but there was like a couple YouTube attorneys and a couple of YouTube employees in there. And I, and Daryl, I think he actually worked at one point for YouTube. I'm, I'm not mm. sure if that's positive or not. Um, but in about, 10 minutes I showed I showed my whole process and I lost everything after that. Oh, yes. Yeah. I, I, you know, it is what it is. Yeah, and then after yeah. there, I think I spoke at rock stars with the Dory and I was supposed to speak for like an hour. I ended up speaking for two and a half hours. I was the last person. Um, and they just kept, they, I was like, I am done. And they're like, just kept asking questions. So I stood on stage for two and a half hours. And then from there, Chiang Mai, um, the first time I spoke, it was not actually at the big conference. It, he, they have, he has like special events every day. And so they did something at a cafe and it ended up being like standing room only, which was cool. Um, and then he, he asked me to come back for the next year. And then I was on the main stage. So that's kind of how I started speaking. I actually uh, hate speaking with a passion. I don't like getting on stage. I don't like, I mean, as people who know me, they know I don't really like crowds. And I like to stay with my own group of people and hang out for a little while. And I miss my computer and I want to go home and talk to my computer. That's what I do. And so... For me to go to conferences is really stressful because like um i'm sure craig and i show i'm sure randy you get this too like you want to go hang out with people and i like to be like the person in the room that nobody knows but that isn't really how it is now but i miss that i couldn't go to uh, i could go to a conference and sit next to a group of people talking about something and i would learn something because it was something that I was looking at it differently. Where now, you know, you go to a conference now and everyone's just like, oh, Holly's at the table. Don't say anything. <laughs> <laughs> it, it is true. I mean, you don't want to say very much around me. I'm not going to lie about that. But, you know, <clears throat> that's that's how I first started going around and speaking. And I actually have tried to, like, I'm not speaking anymore. Don't invite me to speak. And, it, you know, every year I do 15 to 20 conferences and speak yeah out. yeah so. uh that's kind of funny well no i can still walk into a room and nobody said oh there's that guy they generally just say who's that bald dude over there <laughs> yeah uh so i think that is kind of interesting though so um 
you know, Craig, obviously you had a gr good relationship with SEMrush, so that helped. I loved your thought about, because I'm a big believer, this kind of uh, preparation meets opportunity, and that's your path to success. You know, you have to be ready. So like when you were saying like, yeah, I want, I want to do this, I'm going to get ready, I want to, and then when the opportunity arrived for you, like come speak at Chiang Mai, you're like, damn right, I'm, I'm all in, right? You're, you're like, um, and I think you've got to have that mindset to be like, uh, let it roll. Um, but um, uh, the, the, the thing is, Randy, I, I yeah. had been an SEO for 15 years. I, I had my own agency and I wanted to be the bad guy in the background. I, you know, I had a sales guy and I think I've told this story in my mastermind. No mm. one knew who I was and I didn't want anyone to know who I was. And then that sales guy left and started up himself. And I was phoning my clients and they're like, who the fuck are you? And you're like, oh shit. Like, and then from there, um, you know, I, I yeah. made the choice to make sure that people knew who I was. Um, yeah. to some degree. Uh, you know, that, that kind of scared me, though, being the guy in the background, which is what I wanted. Like Holly says, mm -hmm. something, mm -hmm. you just want to do your thing in the background. You don't really care about all that stuff. You know, you're making money. Who gives a right. shit? Right. Um, <laughs> but then uh, I, I thought, fuck it, I want to give a shot. I, I want to have a shot as well. And the one thing I would say to anyone out of all of this, I've met some amazing people from all over the world by doing it. So, um, you know, that's the biggest thing I can take away from it. Uh, you know, out with the money that, that I've made from it and, and the exposure, um, I've met a lot of good people. Yeah. I do think, um, and that's probably the other thing that I would really kind of highlight of some of the stuff that you guys have said thus far, which is the connections are very critical right the the relationships some are strategics and some are just good relationships that you have with people <laughs> oh, no, yeah, but this guy. oh no but this guy <laughs> <laughs> or him. in fact or him or oh. him yes <laughs> Some some of those relationships that are really critical. I mean, like Craig, you were saying like James Dooley, right? So Dooley, you knew Dooley, you got a relationship with him, friendship, and he like helped open the door for you to, you know, drive into Chiang Mai. And uh, so those relationships are absolutely critical. And this is regardless, I think, doesn't matter whether you're SEO or whatever it is that you're doing, you know, and you're thinking about how do you grow your business? How do you grow... Uh, and if you want to grow your personal brand, um, you know, those relationships are real critical. And that's the kind of stuff, you know, and I'll just say kind of going to conferences, you know, that can help um, push that along, you know, like going to conferences, meeting people, becoming friends, making those connections, you know, all of a sudden they can begin to help um, get you known, I suppose, in, in circles, right? Um, <laughs> You know Kaz Buller, right? He was speaking at a uh, Digital Unfiltered. Yeah. Kaz, colored guy, Kaz yeah. Buller. Um, so he he's obviously Scottish. He's young. He works with Dooley uh, and all that kind of stuff. But Kaz Buller, because Dooley helped me, I've got Kaz Buller coming to Dubai to speak at Affiliate World. I've helped him. So it also gets passed yeah. down, which yeah. is the whole thing. Yeah. Oh, that's a great example, though. It's like, but back, back to the point. The relationships are really very critical, and I love what you just did. So you weren't just a taker; you're a giver. Uh, you've got to give back. You've and I've I've always been like I always want to give. I want to give more than I receive. It depends in what context we're talking about, but. <laughs> whether whether you're a taker yeah you've always been a taker <laughs> sorry holly that's a little <laughs> yeah i know you threw that i'm like what craig oh man um yeah so that's good so hey we'll remind you folks take uh throw some craig questions. blushing a little bit there i know heck i'm blushing oh, even. no no it's 25 <laughs> degrees here <laughs> oh god that is funny um yeah <laughs> hey garrett um 
So I lost my whole train of thought on that. Right. <laughs> I was going to say, folks, yeah, send up some uh, questions, throw them up on the chat if you like. If you're watching on YouTube or Facebook or whatever, be sure you like, share, subscribe, all of that fun Here's stuff. Here's the thing. I want to raise a point on this as well, right? So... <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> I know you're going to say something like serious, serious, but you kind of blew me with the other thing already. All right, go ahead. I've seen a, a conversation with my main man, Garrett, yesterday on Facebook. Uh, so, Garrett, this is the flip side of putting yourself out there and leveraging your personal brand, right? Now, we go, we go to these events, we want exposure, we're trying to educate and we're trying to make money and, you know, right. there's an ecosystem there that, that goes on. No one's under any other illusions, but that's what it is. But I've seen Garrett post uh, some useful stuff on Facebook yesterday and <laughs> he had a guy pull him up and say, dude, how do we know if we can fucking believe anything you're saying? How do we even know they're your screenshots? Like, <laughs> we, oh, if it's URLs, um, like, it could be anything. This could be anyone's. And Garrett's like, what the fuck? Um, <laughs> but I'm just curious to know, like, Randy, you've done a bit of speaking. Holly's done a bit of speaking. Like, how do you feel about that? Like, how much do you give away? Now, the reason that I'm going to say this is Holly gave away too much. Previously, at, at whatever she was at, where she lost all the the the, the YouTube stuff. So, how much do you give away? Because obviously, you've got to give back to the community. But that's where I see a problem. And obviously, I seen that with Garrett yesterday, where a guy was basically calling him a bullshit. Or that's what I'm right, interpreting. Right. Um, <laughs> and Garrett's like, dude, I don't have to share shit with you. Like, <laughs> I don't have to share nothing. Um, fuck off, basically. But I, I don't think he quite said it like that. But um, you've just I could see Karen saying that. But yeah. But, oh yeah. Um, <laughs> but it was a lot, a lot more pleasant than that. Yeah. That's actually so. There's a couple of questions that you have. Like one, what is the level? Of, what is the amount that you share? And then the other whole other kind of thing is like, how do you respond to people like that, right? So, because I had somebody and I shared it, I think in our group, Craig. I posted a video, I had it out there, and somebody on Twitter responded to me like, hey, you got a great face for audio podcast. <laughs> and it was my YouTube video. I'm like, what the, <laughs> what the hell? I don't even know you. Who the, who the hell are you? <laughs> right, to be all insulting like that. But like with Garrett, I, I am curious. Did, did, Garrett, did Garrett just say, I didn't see the post, so did Garrett just say, hey, fuck off? Or <laughs> did he, he didn't see fuck off he's just like dude i'm not going to sit and share urls but you know you can ask other people in the industry if i'm a bullshit or not like i'm not known as a as a bullshitter like yeah no value to be gained by me wasting my time even posting this stuff yeah um so but yeah the way i was reading it i could just hear garrett's voice um right. saying go fuck yourself um, yeah. but it was a uh, it was funny yeah. watching trying to squirm and be nice. God, I know. Um, so on the issue of like, how much do you share? I mean, I've gone to a lot of conferences. I probably go like over uh, since the pandemic anyway, I probably go to five or six conferences a year. Um, and I'm amazed at now. This is one thing that I'll say. I love going to conferences because I am amazed at the level of, stuff um that people do share at the conferences like you know similar to like you know holly so you share like the deep dark you know here's the process and put it out there now unfortunately for you you got clapped you know because of that at, at a certain point um you know with your penalties on your youtube channel but you know a lot of people do share quite a bit i know the last time that i spoke i think craig was at digital unfiltered and I really tried to share quite a bit of everything that we were doing. I wasn't going to share my secret sites that we do kind of our back end secret sauce with our PR releases, but I really did share kind of our processes though, that we did. I'm just laughing, Randy, when you say that, remember I exposed just one of your sites. Yeah, no kidding. 
<laughs> but I didn't mean it though. I did. <laughs> um, that was that was funny. That was funny. But you know, and being that we're talking about Garrett, but you know, even at um, you know, a digital unfiltered, you know, Garrett was sharing some stuff and people were like smacking him around a bit right there in the room, even like you know, uh calling him out on some of the stuff that he was doing. Not necessarily, you know, not at the level that he was sharing, but just because what he was sharing, people are like going, What the hell? And you know, and so I don't know. I um is there a right or a wrong answer? I suppose I I would probably say don't share stuff that's going to put your business in jeopardy, but um, you got to share. Oh, yeah. value, I definitely think that when you're sharing, I've learned over the 10 years of speaking. And if you're sharing, don't share stuff that is going to get you in trouble for sure. And, and I also think in our space, it's a little bit of a backstabbing niche situation because mm. <clears throat> some people who you maybe would think who are your friends or business partners or someone who you can confide to are very likely the ones that are reporting some of your properties and reporting your YouTube videos and, and things like that. I have found out the hard way on that, that I will purposely give certain people information and based on what happens on that property is whether or not I can trust them. And it, we've had, I mean, I'm sure that you guys have had to do things like that. I'm sure Garrett has had to do things like that. Um, you're going to get haters. Mm. <clears throat> so the information you share, if you're publicly talking about a property that you're working on, ch chances are it's going to get um, yeah. banned or it's going to be, yeah. the GMB yeah. is going to be gone or something like that. So yeah. Um, in the beginning, I wasn't really so much aware of that, the things I mean, I knew things like that would happen and it could happen. I guess I just didn't think that it would happen. Mm. And even now, when I go to conferences, I actually don't mind sharing about my whole process because my whole process is complicated and there are moving pieces that I don't talk about with anybody. So like you may know what I'm doing, but you don't know how I'm doing it. And you don't know the scale I'm doing it type of a thing. Mm. So I think, mm. you know, just keep that in mind. Mm -hmm. As you mm -hmm. become t more um, a face in the business, like, like Craig has gotten threats and stuff like that. As you become more popular, the more people, the more trolls that you get. So just be aware of that, you know, yeah, like yeah. you can't go through a conference and sit in a conference for three days without someone coming in and picking your brain or sucking everything out of you because they want to know so much information. It right. really, you know, it's the cost of doing business It's the cost of, of being able to go up on stage. Yeah. Yeah. I think that's um, kind of interesting because, well, first of all, you can be, in the industry and not want to be the guy on stage right or gal on stage you can be the person like craig you did that for years you know you were just seo guy and you were in the shadows and pulling the strings and that was it um and or you can like no i want to be out there i want to build this brand so you have to make those decisions first um but also recognize, and I don't know, Craig, if you want to even tell that story anymore or not, but, it, you know, also recognize, though, like what Holly was just saying, there is kind of a dark side a little bit. You got to be, have enough tough skin and precautions, I suppose, that some people are going to come out of the woodwork and just be like, I, I, crazy, shit, crazy. <laughs> I mean, it is it's crazy. I think we, we probably have all had it to some degree. Um, but yeah, I've had my fair share of it and had people threaten my life, threaten my son's life. <laughs> and, you know, what, what I would say to anyone out there, if you ever, you know, want to do it, again, I would highly recommend it. I've loved every moment of the, the journey. 99.9% um, .9 of the people I've met have been super, super great 
uh, I think it's a small proportion of people that do the you know the the, the weird stuff. Um, not saying you don't get trolls. I think we all get trolls. You know, you you can't be liked by everyone, but I, I wouldn't like to sit here and say don't do it because you might get threatened or whatever. Because um, I think you know that happens to a small amount of of people. Uh, it doesn't necessarily mean it happens um, all of the time. So I would say ninety nine percent of it's been a real good laugh. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I would imagine that. Well, it, it, well, I was I was sharing about my Twitter comment about the guy about my looks for a podcast. Um, <laughs> like, yeah, you know, some hell even. Taylor Swift gets haters, right? And thrown at her, but uh, some shade. But yeah, you know, some of that stuff is going to happen regardless. Um, but that's Mickey Mouse, right? Like that one that you yeah, said. Exactly. You know, yeah, 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 yeah. Brush that one off. It's just when it becomes yeah. personal. Um, but I think you you have to be prepared. People will call you bald, specky, right, right. Yeah. you know, whatever. Um, yeah. <laughs> it's, it, these are all childish ones. I know it. I know it. Um, so back on that topic, building the personal brand. So we hit on uh, conferences. We hit on, uh, hey, Eric, uh, we hit on speaking at conferences, making connections at conferences. Uh, and that is good. So Craig, I know you're, you know, at a point you, you, I mean, you like hanging out at the pool or in the bar and hanging out and talking with folks. I mean, that's you anyway. Holly, I'm a little bit more like you. People may not think, but I'm I'm a little more introvert, and I, I I'm not nearly as probably as comfortable like just hanging out at the bars and doing that stuff. But I like these smaller kind of groups and crowd. Um, but um, but it is important though. Like I even for me, I like I gotta force myself to go do it because I know it's important to make connections with folks at these conferences. Um, uh, uh, and then um, probably other topics. So, Craig, how about on the topic on this building the personal brand content? I mean, you had been doing, I don't know how many videos you have out on your YouTube channel. But, I mean, dude, you've got hundreds of videos of content of, of I, I don't even know. I know some of it, a lot of it, is, some of it is product reviews. Some of it is, and I think this is how I connected with when I first landed. I think I landed on one of your YouTube, uh, on one of your videos. And I can't even remember, this is probably four or five years ago. I'm like, wow, this was kind of good. This was interesting. And so I started watching, you know, your, your video content. So, I mean, content is critical you went the path were you doing blogs as well as video or did you like go heavy on video i i, I started with the blog side of things then i just felt that it, it was easier to talk than it was to sit and write out a blog post you know i could talk about 20 minutes saying guys here's how you do a gmb or here's how you you know whatever it is you know the harrow pitch or whatever um, I, I felt more comfortable doing that. I just thought, you know, I'm a lazy bastard. I don't want to sit and write this shit out and think too much about it. Like, let's just let it all roll out the mouth. And uh, for me, it's the easiest way to do it. So I put out a lot of educational-based content. Um, and, yeah, I, I, you know, I think you've got to offer value up front mm -hmm. before you start doing product reviews you don't want to be that guy that's reviewing every tool under right. the sun you know here's the the next ai tool and then next week another one and another one and another one you you're then going to be seen for what you are so um you know i think you've got to offer value up front and i think uh that that that's all i care about you know i want to consume mm -hmm. content i'm not interested in your business randy or how much money you make or how many fucking cars you drive or any of this show off stuff like i want to know what the fuck you're doing give me mm. some tips um mm. Mm. and I, I and i don't mean that against you randy just, you're the example <laughs> uh, just in case anyone's like that's harsh um, <laughs> but yeah you know we're here to consume content so so give give that over um, right. by all means if you can dress that up and have some fun too and um, then you're on to a winner i think yeah 
I don't think anybody's going to be impressed with me driving my 2011 Outback. So <laughs> I'm not, don't see any videos of that coming up anytime soon. But um, what was the pace? So I'm always kind of curious, and I've heard this, you know, for people, and I see some people, you know, like Kazra uh, is one. Um, uh, I, there's another guy I've seen that's really is like trying to, gain some traction on kind of creating his brand a little bit and they're doing content video content what is the pace of putting that kind of content out when you were starting and you were kind of throwing that stuff out where were you doing like one every day every other day like a couple of week i mean what what were you hammering um so i was trying to do one a day but i kind of cheated slightly so for many years, I had built online courses. Mm. Um, so what I'd done was then started to push the, the course content onto YouTube as well um, and, and put that into playlists. Because uh, I do a lot of content, like in, in the, the mastermind, Randy, you see there's, yeah. Yeah. I don't know, 250 sessions or whatever it is. I could put all of that. I know I wouldn't because it's got people's, you know, personal opinions and, and you know, it's private. <laughs> Let's just say that. But there's a lot of content that I have still that I have never put out. Um, mm. so, but it's strange you say that. Big uh, Andres from the Mastermind messaged me and he's like, Craig, I've, I've uh, taken action. I've put out some, some I'm not going to say what country and niche and all that kind of stuff, but he's put out some stuff in his own country. And he's he's gained a couple of leads in the last couple of weeks. He's like uh, in the last couple of weeks, and he's like, and I, an hour before this this session, he says, "How many videos should I put out a day? Is it one? Is it two? I'm like, dude, the more the merrier. Go look at Palmer. Palmer's shitting them out like, right? God knows how many Palmer's done, but um, but use him as the example. Um, you know, I cheated. Well, not cheated, but I had a lot of content." That was previously made, which I uploaded, which made it look like I was uploading more content. People didn't realize some of it was two years old. Uh, at the, you know, when I was uploading it, but that is what it is. But yeah. that's what I've done it. Yeah, velocity of content, I think, is important. Now, Holly, you are what I would say an outlier of this scenario because uh, you are a brand you are well known in the industry and probably outside of the industry <laughs> um yeah not yeah. on purpose um, but yeah yeah and but you really didn't put i mean about you and what you're presenting you really didn't put out a lot of video content about Hey, I'm Holly, and let me share this with you, kind of. Um, in the beginning, so a lot of people, I don't know if they know who, why I actually got started, but um, Anthony Hayes is the person who brought me out in the SEO space. So uh, my mentor was Derek Pierce um, and Rymac, if anyone remembers them back from 2014. Um, they were the first ones that got me to go to a conference in Raleigh. It was a warrior forum conference. Loved it actually. Um, and then people met me there and they heard about who I was and stuff like that. And then Anthony Hayes was like, Hey, just show up. It was spring break actually in 2014 in March and said, show up to this webinar. We're going to just have you on and talk about what you're doing. And I showed up, there's like a hundred people. Um, and I basically just said, you know, I was at the time I was doing like um, YouTube Hangouts is what they were called at the time. They were live Hangouts. And I just oh, yeah. talked about what I did. I didn't really talk about who I was or anything like just like this is a process. I always have just talked about the process of what we're doing. Mm -hmm. And at the end of it, they were all like, where's the pitch? I'm like, I'm not selling anything. I'm just coming on talking. Right. We ended up doing f four of those. And. Um, on the last one, Anthony set up a website and everything. He's like, just come to the live training. And there was a hundred people and we sold a hundred seats. Every mm -hmm. single person bought a seat and then they bought the upsell. I think probably 80% of the people bought the upsell. 
And from there, I went to everyone just wanted me on their, at the time it was go to webinar. Right. And people really weren't doing replays. So you had to show up for the show. Uh, you weren't emailed a replay where now everyone gets replays. You know, you don't have to show up more or less. And that's how people started learning about me. I never, I have never put out content about my brand. My business brand is not a name anyone even knows, to be honest with you. And it's spelt wrong because I just spelt it wrong. Um, <laughs> <laughs> but like no one really... I mean, they just know me as the YouTube queen. They don't, unless you're in my very tight knit, like Randy is and Craig is. And when we go to conferences, we hang out, we talk about family. We don't necessarily talk so much about SEO. I mean, I come to, to Randy's a couple of times a year and we hang out. Those people are my friends. Those people know my personal life and how I got started. And they know Holly as the a different person than online, you know? Mm -hmm. So I've never, I've never done any brand work. Even when I was sued, I didn't do any reputation management or anything like that. I just let the pieces fly where they were going to fly. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That's a good, I'm not point. like a traditional oh. because I'm not a traditional SEO person. I don't know yeah. SEO. I understand manipulation. I understand, um, scaling. I understand numbers and I can look at something and very quickly know where the hole is. So yeah. I can compute it very, very quickly. But when we look at talk about SEO and like on page and stuff like that is so boring to me because I just like, it's like, click, click, click. I don't, I don't know. It's just, it's not fun to me. Breaking right. stuff is fun to me. So I would say when you're talking about building the personal brand, this is where I'd go back. I think you're kind of, you, you have created, you know, your brand and I don't want to say maybe accidentally, but you know, you've elevated your brand because of the crazy shit that you've done and you right. go like huge. I mean, you just like, Hey, I'm going to put out a few videos. I'm going to show you how you can rank these videos and use them for lead gen and right. you know, kind of thing. No, I'm going to put out a million plus videos. I'm going to have you know, right. 8,000 of these things or whatever. Right. But and it doesn't actually always start off like that because. No, but I that's have... the reputation though. That like right. when people like Holly starts, Oh, she does crazy shit. She like goes back, you know, it's like all of a sudden. And, yeah. but it's not because you like put out several hundred videos on how to do something. I no. mean, you, you took an approach, which I think is good. And I, I didn't mean to say it accidentally, but you know, you were like, Hey, I'm going to be on, you know, like this, uh, live stream show, or I'm going to be on somebody's, you know, go to webinar. And so you put yourself in a position where you're kind of working collaboratively and or guesting, um, on, in that kind of environment. And because of the, like, I don't want to say crazy stuff, but, you know, but because of the stuff that you were doing that it was so like, people were like, what the. Right. That, I think it gets, it, you know, that, I mean, that is why I went. So like, I usually will try to do a really big test every year, like a big right, test. We're talking, right. you know, like the stupid phone test that we did, you know, and I'm doing the social media test now. And then like we did the news network test. So I pick something that no one really, I don't think no one else is doing, but I don't know very many people that are doing the space that I'm doing some of our tests in mm. just so that it, that shock value can bring, it, it is a bit of the brand, right? The shock value is who I am. I know I can get on stage that way by talking about some of the tests. So it was not done on purpose at all. I didn't want to be like, the Holly Starks, like, didn't want to be like that. You know what I mean? Yeah. I mean, honestly, in 2014, I was on welfare. Um, I was on state aid. I was uh, getting paid $7 an hour to deliver newspapers. And I worked from, like, I think I worked, like, four to five hours a day. And my checks were, like, I don't even know. I think they were, like, $150, something like that. And... In six weeks of releasing what I was doing with YouTube, um, it blew up. It wasn't on purpose. I didn't know what I was doing. But the people around me 
Like you mm. said, the, the conference, the people around me knew what I was doing and I was doing it very well. And they were like, we can, we can get this out to other people. And I, you know, that's how it started. Mm. It wasn't because mm. I was like, I want to become Holly Starks. I want to be right, like, right. you know, it wasn't like that. Yeah. Well, that's why I say it. it's kind of almost accidental that you, yeah. but you became, but it's because of who you are, right? Though, so maybe not so much accidental, but you didn't take an intentional approach, I guess, to say, "Hey, yeah. I want to build be build this Holly Starks brand." Um, so you mentioned a couple uh, of folks, and I, I want to get to and ask. Well, let's ask because Patrick uh, Rice has a good question on here, Craig. Patrick is one that I was was mentioning earlier. I know Patrick is trying is putting out more content and some good stuff, you know, and 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 building his brand. He's got a great question. Uh, what do you expect in terms of getting leads from YouTube? Thoughts? I think it's hard to quantify X amount of leads for the. I think what I would say to you, Patrick, known Patrick is a do. I think your your mindset has to change. Don't sit and think just now, how many leads am I going to get from this? I think it's a different game altogether. Now, yes, leads will automatically come from it over a period of time. But if you're calculating how many YouTube videos you do based on the amount of leads you do, I think you would have the wrong mindset. Now, I started YouTube... Did I get leads in the first, I don't know, three to six months? Probably not, um, if, if I can remember correctly. Um, you know, it was about brand awareness, showing my personality, demonstrating knowledge and expertise. That is the only thing that I wanted um, from it. The leads will follow, Patrick. You just have to be consistent. So I wouldn't be downhearted if you say to me, Craig, I've done 20 videos and I've got jack shit for it. 20 videos is rookie numbers. Holly will tell you, she, I mean, Holly's shitting out videos. God knows how many of them. Not all of what Holly does using AI and that whole scalable model that she uses stick. Um, and not all of your videos are going to stick. So that is where I think you just need to grind it out and don't think of it as a, a lead type of thing. People often say to me, Patrick, Craig, how do you monetize your YouTube? How do you make money from it? Now, getting paid, <laughs> getting paid from AdSense is fucking peanuts. Um, it's not worth it, um, in all honesty, uh, from that perspective. Now, this, this goes into another nice topic, you know, leveraging my personal brand to help a friend like Randy. Yes, there's cash exchanged. Um, but has Randy's business improved leveraging my personal brand? The answer is 100% yes. Well, that's what Randy tells me, and he keeps paying his bills. So, uh, <laughs> so I'm taking that as a yes. How well does it go is anyone's guess. But there's a lot more to come from YouTube, Patrick. You know, if you get... X amount of followers and you've got a lot of traffic, I'm sure there'll be guys like Randy who maybe is a bit shyer. Now, I've met Han, uh, Randy and Holly at events and, you know, they go out for dinner and they don't drink much and all that kind of stuff. You, if you're prepared to leverage your personal brand and put your face out there, people like Randy or, or, or people, whoever, will happily pay you good money to be promoted on your YouTube channel whether that's through a product review video, a sponsorship like that. This one is kind of subtle, not in your face. And it still works very well for Randy. I'm not sitting here going, you have to buy press releases. All of this content is all about fucking press releases. But, <coughs> you know, you, so you can make a lot of money from it um, as well. So I think you're building up a long-term future, Patrick, you know, from your personal brand, not necessarily leads. Um mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So I would try and do that. And obviously, Kaz Bula is here as well. Yeah. Um, is, you know, just be consistent, network. Um, and 
Here's the perfect thing, Randy. You probably not even know this story, right? And it goes back to that networking thing. Young Patrick um, came out to Chiang Mai and uh, he was hanging around and he bumped into this guy. And the guy's like, listen, I've had a speaker um, pull out of a gig in, in China. Uh, he says, I'm looking for an SEO speaker. Uh, speaker, do you fancy it? Patrick's like, yeah, I'll fucking do it. And Patrick's like, do you think I should go? I'm like, fucking go for it, mate. Like, go and get the dance. <laughs> uh, went and bought his sailor suit, flew over to China, had his first speaking gig. He would have never got that if he never taken the time to fly to Chiang Mai. Um, so sometimes just, again, being in the right place at the right time, Patrick. Uh, and people, that guy must have liked the way he was chatting, young, enthusiastic. Mm -hmm. I think uh, you've just got to think about that. And obviously what Kaz Bula says here is it's, it's building a brand that isn't a sprint. Um, and I'm pretty sure Kaz, I know Kaz uh, very well. Uh, I'm pretty sure Kaz doesn't sit and think, how many leads will I get from this just now? He's building up a bit of, you know, the character and, and all that kind of stuff alongside it. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I was just going to say, Kazer put this comment up, but I was just going to echo that Patrick is, uh, I, I think it is a, it is a marathon and don't think about it. Well, I didn't get anything for my video yesterday I put up or last week. And it is like, just keep putting it up. <laughs> just, <laughs> just, just keep putting the stuff out there. You know, if that's the, if that's the I want to comment, I want to comment to Randy on that. Is that, so, um, I think it was in 2018, maybe 2019, I um, put out consistent content for probably six months about YouTube and why you want to do YouTube for your reputation management, blah, 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 blah. And I felt like I was getting a lot of subscribers, but I wasn't, I didn't really have anything to pitch at the point. I was just trying to get subscribers to listen to me, to trust me, um, which is why I don't do the teleprompting also, Randy, is that I feel like if I can get on stage and I can go off the cuff and you can ask me about anything, about any topic. I'm going to either tell you I know it and tell you why I know it or tell you why I don't know it. And mm -hmm. when when you're able to do that, on, that's why you're like, that's why I'm known as an SEO person or sorry, a YouTube person. It's because you can ask me anything about YouTube and I'm generally going to know it. If I don't know it, then I'm going to tell you, right? I go off the cuff. So when I'm creating videos... You know, when I was trying to build an audience, I could just get on get on and just talk about the, the topic and people could ask questions and I didn't have to prepare um, a speech. I didn't have to prepare for that, which is what I liked to do, because I think that shows that 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 person really does know the content. I know, you know, your content. I'm not saying that you don't. I don't like when I watch videos, I don't want to watch a professional video because it feels like a professional video. I want to just like Craig's videos. He just gets on and talks. That's what likes me, right? It It's just, you got to know who your traffic is, know who your target right. is. Uh, you know, I went six months and I didn't have a pitch. And when I finally did have a pitch, it was actually a, um, a YouTube training class. And it was for five weeks. You had homework. It was five grand. It was a thousand dollars a week. And I sold a hundred seats uh, in a matter of weeks. And that was a hundred percent pure YouTube. It wasn't off my list. It was all from YouTube. So mm -hmm. the money's there if you know what your tar target is. And if you have that trust, if you don't have mm -hmm. that trust, if you're not getting on and you're showing, just like Craig said, show, give, give some of that worth up front because they're going to trust you. They're going to understand that you know what your stuff is. Yeah, yeah, you got to give the value up front. Let me ask you this. I want to get on. Uh, Jose th threw out a great question or a topic to talk about. But so like Patrick, I know is jumping on. He's throwing a, a lot of uh, some good content out there on, on video. Patrick, by the way, your uh, last one on Screaming Frog was great. Um, there's so many platforms out there. I mean, like Craig, when you started, you know, like when you were doing video content, uh, you know, uh, six, seven, eight years ago, Holly, you know, 10 years ago, I, some of these platforms were not nearly as big as they are 
But now you, there's so many different platforms to put content on and try to hit, right? Do you, do you just, so the question, I guess, is not having to rattle all of these things up, but between all of the different social platforms, and then you can get onto YouTube, and then you can do a podcast, and then you can do these live streams. Should you, would you take an approach like you just got a shotgun and hit every damn target you can? Or would you like, no, be really dial in one or. I, I'm a, you know, shot, a, a shotgun approach. Mm -hmm. I throw on everything. I throw shit at spaghetti at the wall with stick sticks. Mm -hmm. That's, that's my brand though. That's my approach. Right. I don't know. Well, that's, and so I'm thinking about th on this particular topic, though, about building your brand. So you would say everything, you know, hit LinkedIn, hit Twitter, hit video, yeah. do, do the podcast. That's what we're doing do now. Yeah. 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 See, I'm not sure I agree with that um, personally. So here's how I see it. <clears throat> I, I do YouTube. People come here and they'll, they'll, they'll watch a live stream or they'll watch an educational video. Now, on Facebook, my friends probably expect to see some stupid, stupid shit. They don't want to be rammed full of fucking SEO stuff. Like, you can come to YouTube if you mm -hmm. want to see that. Twitter, I think you can you can obviously double up and, and you know, do shorts and, and, you know, all that kind of stuff. And I think TikTok's the same. But Instagram um, is another one where I struggle to get huge traction on Instagram from, from an SEO perspective. The same as TikTok. My SEO shorts and, and whatnot don't perform well on TikTok. If I want to shake my fucking booty, it gets more traction on TikTok. So it's known your audience. But <coughs> let's say, Randy, this is the way I thought it thought about it. Now, if you want to see me talk, you come to YouTube and you ask questions or whatever. Do you really want your feed rammed with the same old shit on Facebook? Or would you rather see another side to me? That's the way I see it. Like, people don't engage. You know, if I put up a picture, and I've done this, Randy, if I put up a picture of my son, it fucking goes wild on uh, Facebook. The interaction goes wild. If I post that I'm on a live with Randy and Holly, it'll get four likes. <laughs> so... That's how I see it. That's how I see it. But, um, well, your son's a lot cuter than the than the three of us. So, <laughs> <laughs> uh, that that is an interesting approach. I, you know, as uh, uh, Joe over there said, spray and pray. Uh, I, yeah, I think it, it probably benefits more to kind of maybe focus on. I just don't see how you can like do all of them, you know, unless you're doing some AI kind of stuff, but uh, otherwise to like to really give good, you know, to hit all of these different platforms or pieces of content, I think is really difficult. So, you know, I know you mentioned somebody earlier, Craig, and he was, and you, I can see it. He's like every day he's putting stuff out, putting a video out on LinkedIn and he's getting some good traction on that. Um, uh, and, and I don't know if he's doing it in other places, but I see him on LinkedIn anyway. I, um, uh, yeah, I, I, I'm not sure, but I love your point though, about kind of show the other side as well. I, I think that's kind of valuable. I don't need to see your, literally your other side shaking it, but you know, I don't need to see your hiney out there, but I did enjoy your video today. You put out with you jumping in the, uh, whatever the bay i don't know what that was you were jumping in but yeah so people want to see that shit when you're there i think so yeah yeah i think so. so yeah i'm 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 all waiting this week i'm like oh this is gonna be good you got you and slory out taking a trip to dubai what kind of debauchery are you guys gonna get into i'm i'm waiting for the reels to start spinning okay. we <laughs> only arrived at like 2 a.m <laughs> this morning so they were just chilling, catching up with a few emails and bits and bobs. Like for the next week, there's going to be fucking God knows what happening, man. I know. It'll be funny. Uh, so let's get this one last question before we roll. Uh, Jose asks a question about Sora. Um, yeah. So we haven't talked about Sora just like it hit like a few days ago. I, that thing is like crazy amazing. 
I don't, Holly, I'm curious on your impression of that because that seems like that would just get you all excited. It's um, it's interesting because I would not use it the same way as uh, some people are going to use it. So I can see it used as more of a longer video, you know, make movie trailers, uh, make kids movies. It's it's cool, but is it going to change anything that I'm doing currently with AI? No. And I just I, I think it's cool, but I don't I don't know. It, it seems like another runaway, you know, like the runaway program. Mm. It, it's a bit like that. So maybe with some things like with crime, it would be cool because you're going to have, you can have like a dark lady walking in a back alley or so in, in like the crimes area, it would be fine. Mm. Um, like setting the stage for yeah. additional content though. Yeah. Yeah. But like for like what we're doing for brand recognition for the, you know, like for yours, right. Mm. For Cleveland and doing like Cleveland quotes is I no, we're never going to use it. Right. It's, you know, so in the right, the right niche, I think it's okay, but <coughs> you know, eh. I, I, it'll be interesting to see where it goes. Um, I've not even looked at it yet. I'll be honest. Yeah. I, well, it's all over the internet right now. And so I think, I, I don't know if people actually have access to it. I haven't, like, I no, not as far as I know, work. like people yeah. like are putting funny things out. Like, Hey, I got invitation codes, whatever. But the, I mean, yeah, no, it's not, it's not available right now. So, I mean, I just know in my in our in our space, and as much as we're using video, it's not going to change. Um, it, it probably would change very small amounts of our stuff. Mm. The crime would be the crime, and the um, the crime stories would maybe be one of the biggest things, and maybe some of the um, the psychological stories that we do would, you know, it would fit for that, but. Mm. You know, Holly. Yeah. Do you get any JFK stuff? Do I do any JFK stories or? Yeah. yeah. Like I'm, conspiracy I'm theories. Channel. Yeah, I'm hooked on this channel, and all it does is go through all the fucking conspiracy theories, and it's fucking oh. sick. And like it, it, the channel's massively blown up. Like. What is the name of it? What's the I'll name of the message it? You later. I'm pretty sure it's just called GFK Conspiracy. Something like GFK Conspiracy 60 Days. It's a big, long fucking name. It sounds like a Holly Starks style <laughs> name. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Jesper. Jesper. <laughs> I'm not into those kind of conspiracies. Normally, like GFK type interesting stuff. Um, that flat earth stuff. I have often wondered, though, um, what did you say it was JFK conspiracies? And then 60 days, six zero, and then days. In fact, let me give me a second. I don't even see it. GFK. <laughs> Something about 60 fucking days. Du, du, du. I need to dig it out. I'll send you it later, Holly. Um, but this fucking channel's doing well, man. Um, I, I was a, a, a channel just just in general conspiracy theories, um, but not just like JFK. See, I, I I think Holly, you could get some real traction on that JFK. See the search volume for it on yeah. Sam Rush. Scary. I think if you, I'm not saying you can't do it just in general, but like I find it really interesting uh, too. We we probably could do it within uh, minutes, but we need to look at the channel. Yeah, yeah. yeah. 
Yeah, well, I always, I, over the last few days, I've been wondering uh, how this Sora is going to influence both YouTube and YouTube search as people put out, um, you know, uh, one minute videos or short videos and things that they could do on that with that. But uh, yeah, hey, m moon landing was fake all the way. <laughs> yeah, just watch the shadows on the, uh, you know, you can tell from the images. <laughs> uh, all right, that's good stuff. All right. Well, Craig, enjoy Dubai. What, what's the conference? Is it uh, Affiliate World Dubai? Is that what you're at? Yeah. Um, well, next week. Yeah. I won't be here next week. I will be on a cruise. Yeah. Fair enough. Yeah. You're not, you're not going to join us from the cruise? I will be standing in line to get on the cruise. <laughs> <laughs> um, I'll tell you a quick funny story, actually, before we wrap up. So when I started out um, talking about consistency and all that for Pat, uh, Patrick, um, I was doing same rush webinars and I hated letting them down. And I remember I flew to Iceland for a conference and my plane got delayed and I remember jumping on, and same rush used to be really big on your background and shit like that. Uh, and I was in the arrivals terminal. I found a seat with a plug and literally went on. And the guy from same rush was like, dude, what the fuck are you doing? And I'm like, <laughs> dude, my flight was late. But um, so Holly, you can stand in the fucking queue. Get the iPad out. Yeah. I t if I can, I will. But like, I'm only kidding. Gonna be with the wife, you know. Ha have your have your wife just hold up like a towel behind you, right? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if she's gonna go for that. <laughs> uh, that's funny. All right. What? Well, that'll that'll be fun. No, dude, it's not sixty minutes Australia, right? No, it's not that. Okay. I'll change it straight after this. I need to go get my phone. Okay. It's on the phone. Um, but, yeah, I'll send that over. So how, how long are you away for, Holly? A week. A week. Yeah. Cool. And by the way, we hate boats. Um, we don't like open water. We I don't like water that I can't see the bottom of. I get very, very motion, very, very sick with motion. Like even a swing, I can't even swing because I get so sick on it. Take a oh. big bottle of grappa with you. <laughs> oh, I am taking grappa on board. I have like 20 pills of like Dramamine. I have a bunch of, yeah, I don't, I don't. Yeah. Yeah. Holly, I've got one thing, a suggestion for TikTok. Yeah. The Titanic. Oh my <laughs> <laughs> I'm funny. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so on that note, very we, good. <laughs> we are out of time, guys. But appreciate everyone coming in. Please do leave a like and subscribe yeah. on the channel. Do check out these guys, Holly Starks and Randy. You can see Randy's link below, but I'm sure Holly Starks you can find. Facebook um, is where I find her, um, but YouTube, whatever, um, and hollystarks.com if you want to hear more from Holly. And we will be back same time next week. Maybe not with Holly, but uh, we'll come back and chat about something. So <laughs> we'll see you guys next week. All right. Thanks for joining, baby. <laughs>